What's up guys, Everything Apple Pro here, and it's a big day for Apple today. They've released four software updates and a new battery case for the 6S. I'm gonna be covering these software updates in this video. Pretty much, I wanna let you guys know what's going on, what's new in iOS 9.2 that's just been released, go over all of the new features that have been changed since the last beta, which there are quite a few, I was surprised to learn this, and just give you a general overview of how iOS 9.2 is, should you update, and uh, pretty much all the new features. So. Aside from iOS 9.2, Apple did release OS 10.11 point two which features a wi-fi fix thank goodness for that so if you guys have a mac go ahead and update if you're on el capitan right now it's definitely going to make things a lot better also apple watch os 2.1 which features a lot of language improvements to both siri uh, voice dictation a ton of language stuff in there and a little bit of stability and tv os 9.1 if you have the new apple tv 4 but let's focus on ios 9.2 it's the one that people have been waiting for for quite some time now and you know, it's been four betas. Usually we expect between four to six, but Apple uh, made good time on iOS 9.2 and now it's here. So what's new in this update? There's actually quite a lot that Apple has improved since the last beta and I'm excited to share that with you. But before I get into that, I do want to share a couple other things with you. So this update is of course available over the air. If you do have the beta four, I was unable to update from the beta. So you're going to need to use your computer to update, but otherwise you can go ahead and go into soft drop update and you should see it in here. As far as storage goes, I had 113 capacity and uh, 83.4 available before updating. After updating, I had 83.7. So 0.3 gigabytes of cache files, whatever it may be, were cleared. So I got a little bit of memory back. This will probably be a bigger impact for people with smaller storage sizes, but you know, it was a good feature to see. So other than that, let me tell you, my phone feels alive. I mean, I bought the new 6S, and at first it was okay. It was faster than the 6, but the more I used it, the more I noticed just how much lag there was in everything. Now things feel so much better. It's so responsive going into the app switcher like that. 3D touch feels much better. There's still a little bit of chop, but it's nowhere near as bad as it was on iOS 9.1. It certainly feels like a breath of fresh air on my new iPhone 6s plus so thank you Apple thank you for finally taking the time to listen to us and improve responsiveness on the new iOS 9.2 firmware if you were experiencing lag on iOS 9.1 it's been improved guys trust me 9.2 makes good work of all of the lag and it's definitely feeling much much better now I'm so happy about that uh, I was really disappointed with that now as far as new features there's a lot to share so let me go ahead and start with the biggest stuff so in the news application there is now a news top stories section so it'll take all of the biggest stories and compile them into one list which is an optimization to the news application in iBooks there is now 3d touch support and I don't mean on the app which is good that was there before but if you're actually using it to read a book and let's say you're looking over the chapters and you want to get a quick preview of uh, if you've seen the chapter instead of having to load it just 3d touch into it peek and pop and take a look if you've read that chapter I think this is probably one of the most brilliant uses of 3D Touch. I mean, it's great. This is kind of what I predicted, and I'm so happy that Apple's implementing 3D Touch support into many other areas of the iPhone. So as iOS progresses, we'll be seeing more and more of this, but I was very happy to learn this. To get a quick preview here, very nice to add 3D Touch support to that. There's new support in the Mail app for Mail Drop. So what Mail Drop is, is it was an exclusive OS 10 feature that would allow you to send sizes up to five gigabytes using the Mail app. Now Apple has implemented implemented that into here, which is great. So you can send larger attachments to other email accounts. Next, this is a pretty big one. I can't show you it because I don't have it, but the USB camera adapter that was standard on iPads, which you could import photos from SD cards using a little adapter. It's now supported on iPhones on iOS 9.2. All iPhones except the 4S now support the USB camera adapter as long as you're on iOS 9.2. This does not support iPod touches though. So great if you uh, take a lot of pictures pictures and you like to share them with your phone right away instead of having to go to a computer and swap photos. So I thought that was a, a great addition. Thank you, Apple, for uh, doing that. Now, this is an existing feature, but using number sync for AT&T phones, you can actually connect your phone to your computer, to your iPad and receive SMS and actual calls there without needing to have your SIM card plugged in. So it's kind of like Wi-Fi calling to the next level. So that was a great feature to see. And to activate that, if you're on T-Mobile, go to the phone application and click calls on other devices. 
ports. So in here, you should see other devices that you can hook this up to, but it only works on AT&T at the moment, uh, besides Wi-Fi calling for other networks. So great feature. There are some additions to Apple Music as well. So as you can see, there are those new uh, labels right there, pretty much letting you know that the music is on your device. Pretty much when you select more info on a song, you can create a new playlist to add the song to instead of having to go and manually create a playlist and then go back and add it to it. You can create a playlist straight from here. Playlists are now organized by uh, date created or modified, which uh, they'll change order in there. And overall, there's a lot of stability improvements, uh, not to mention the menus are a little bit different. It's just overall a great addition, simplifying the music application. And of course, Safari View Controller supports third-party extensions and the ability to reload the page. So if you don't know what that is, if you're ever using a browser within an application and uh, it's kind of like a Safari Lite version, Apple has added some new functionality to it, allowing you to use third-party extensions such as uh, 1Password and other applications, basically a more extensive in-app browser. So that's pretty much it. The biggest stuff for iOS 9.2, there is Arabic support in Siri now, you know, a couple other smaller features, but that's the biggest stuff. And there have been some welcome changes since the last beta, which I honestly didn't expect. Now, should you guys update to iOS 9.2? To be honest with you, there is no reason not to update. Who doesn't want a device that feels brand new, is much faster, and has some nice new additions to iOS 9? I mean, really, it's a great firmware. Apple has finally made it better, especially on the 4S and iPads in general, the iPad Air 2. I will be making a full speed comparison in just a little bit to show you the true extent of the changes, but it's much faster, much more stable, and there are some improvements throughout the entire system. Now, if you're expecting a jailbreak, I would hang on to iOS 9.1 for now, uh, just because iOS 9.2 might be harder to jailbreak and we might see a jailbreak sooner for 9.1, but really it's up to you guys. I'm just a cautious person. So personally on the phones, I'm gonna be jailbreaking. I'm gonna keep them on 9.1 for now. I mean, you can always update later to 9.2, right? Uh, otherwise, go ahead and enjoy iOS 9.2. Anyone that doesn't care about a jailbreak, it's much better with all these features that you just saw. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Have a great day and stay tuned for the iOS 9.2 versus iOS 9.1 speed comparison. It'll show us really just how much faster it is. Enjoy the update, guys. Peace.